Hey everyone, Yang Yan Zhao, finally back after three weeks of taking care of the mother-in-law. Thought we'd get things kicked off right with a nice video about color. So how do you know color is good? How do you know it's serving the purpose of your story? How do you know it's getting the information across? Let's take a look at the works of Kyle Ritter to find out. So who is Kyle Ritter and why should we care? Well, Kyle is a pretty popular guy in the independent comic scene right now. He was discovered by Ethan Van Skyver and is currently working on his Cyberfrog book. Hopefully it'll be out soon. And he's gotten a lot of other work from a lot of creators, mostly in the comic skate community. So originally for Cyberfrog, Ethan had hired somebody else. I believe it was Moose Ballman, uh, but that didn't work out for some reason or another. And Kyle had really been proactive messaging Ethan, say, hey, I want to ink your stuff. It's my dream to ink your stuff and showed Ethan some examples. And apparently Ethan loved it. And here we are. So is Kyle actually any good? Well, we'll take a look by his use of color palette and see if it really adds to Ethan's pencils. So unfortunately, Cyberfrog is still not out, but we did just get a preview chapter drop last week. So we're going to take a look at a couple of images, some from the book and some from uh, some other work that Kyle's done. So this is quickly the preview chapter. So one thing we notice about Kyle, which is a little bit unusual for men, is that there's a lot of yellow, bright yellows and oranges, uh, which are contrasting colors to these green, green blues. And he doesn't seem to shy away from color. A lot of men, especially, will stick to darker greens, blues. They're not really comfortable in bright yellows. So we see a little bit of blue, uh, darker blues coming in as well with the salamandroid character. But let's take a closer look at a couple of the images and we'll see what he gets up to here. So this is just uh, a page that I pulled out of that preview chapter. Now, a lot of the pages look very similar in color uh, to this page. So we're just gonna go and take a quick look here. So if we take a look at how Kyle uses his colors here, we have uh, contrasting colors and we have a lot of colors that work together in harmony. So let's talk real quick about the color wheel, how colors work together. Okay, so colors uh, are very quickly divided up sort of into three different kinds. So for primary colors, we have red, blue, and yellow. And these colors are on the wheel more or less equidistant. Those are primaries. Then we have what we call secondary colors, which would be your greens, oranges, and purples. And then we have what we call tertiary colors. So the tertiary colors are in between primary and secondary colors. So we would have some yellow here and then green here. So we have this yellow green between green and blue. We have sort of a blue green, so on and so forth. So to make colors, make colors work together, we can do generally a few things. 
we can do opposite colors. So for example, sorry guys, first try, I'm uh, trying this live. Let's see if we can get this to work. So there's a few things we can do. Uh, one is we have analogous colors, which would be colors that are similar in nature. And this is what we see a lot in Kyle's work. So you would start with a color we have, for example, green, and then he uses the colors next to it. So you would the, and when we're talking about this, we're usually talking about primary, secondary colors. So he'll also use yellow and blue. So these colors together. So if we go back to that page, oops. Okay, so we can see most of the colors in this image are a combination of these three. So not this red, but I made a, a flet, which is a quick, a quick color palette. And I pulled the most commonly used colors that I see here. So this guy here would be, this one would be uh, the main cyber frog character colors. Then below it, this is this guy is more like backgrounds. Uh, we have a little bit with sky over here, this blue. This is the yellow in the eyes. This is some of the lighter highlights here. And then we have the chest color. So all of these colors are one section away from each other on the uh, color palette. So let me just go back a little bit here. So one thing to notice when you're checking for colors, uh, you want to have them against a neutral gray, which is why I painted them over this gray swatch because one color next to another color can affect how those colors look or how we perceive those colors. So an interesting thing is, um, if we go back to the color wheel for a second here, so we can see green, what's opposite green? Red right here. What are these highlight colors that we have in uh, Cyber Frog here. So we can see we've got the, so we've got these bands uh, around the arms, down here, down here, and down here, over here. So these three uh, are red, Red is the complementary. Complementary just means the opposite side of the color wheel. So these will naturally draw our eyes. Now it doesn't always have to be red, although red has a special place uh, in color theory, just because of the amount of cells in our eyes. So if most people don't know, basically your eyes can only detect three colors red, blue, and green. And the amount of cells to detect each color different. So for every, if I remember correctly, for every one blue cell, there are 40 green cells and about 200 red cells. Now this would be ancient humans back on the plane in Africa. You would need to see fruit. You know, what's a ripe fruit? They're often red. Uh, you need to see red color more and your brain by mixing these three colors will produce all the colors that we can see and it's the same kind of system as on a tv so getting back a little bit how is kyle using these colors so he makes a harmonious uh, color palette and then use a little bit of contrast with the red. So 
the harmonious color palette uh, that we call it with the analogous colors, the colors that are similar. Uh, it creates a very comfortable scene, but not as dynamic of a scene. Okay, so here's another image, not from the preview chapter. I just grabbed this page on Indiegogo and we'll see uh, what he's doing a little bit more. So here he's changed his color palette a bit. He uses these reds. He uses reds as a background here. Uh, and the reason is because Salamandroid is blue purple. So this really makes him pop out of the frame more. So if we didn't have this, uh, and we could see what would happen if we go to black and white. So I'm just gonna take the saturation of the colors down. Now we have a little bit of contrast here. And the reason that we have that is because Salamon Android is gray against a lighter background. So you have a bit of black and white contrast popping him out, but really it's, uh, it's that color, that contrast in color that makes him pop more. And so we can see he mixes it up a little bit. Here is a crossover color. Now this image is quite interesting to me and we can see really what the color adds to it. So if we take this one down, what we end up with is where's the focal point on this picture? So you have a lot of lines coming this way. We've got the angles of the body, okay? But we have, uh, so this is sort of the focal point right around here. But we have this problem of Hell Priest with the sniper rifle. So this effectively is cutting off the image here. And so the eye naturally wants to gravitate towards the bottom uh, of a frame. This is uh, this is uh, where the eye is naturally drawn. And so by having this sniper rifle up sniper rifle up here, we don't really look at this zombie guy up top. So what we need uh, is some color to help save us. Let's go back here and turn the saturation up. So now, like I mentioned before, uh, the red is so strong that your eye is gonna start up, up here in the top and you're gonna notice this guy. You're gonna notice this guy and what's going on. Also, this yellow value really draws the eye into it. Now, Kyle's also got a bit of symmetry going on uh, because what we see is there's a lot of red up here, but you also have this little bit of red down in the corner, and then you have some red down on Devil Dog. So what happens is the eye will travel between these so it keeps moving. Now you also have a little bit of red here on uh, Lone Star, which is fine. Uh, the eye basically wants to move in a circle around these things. And you have, uh, you can see the bottom, which is normally the heaviest weighted, is blue. So why would you want this, a, um, a blue, these blue colors which tend to recede more, which are more passive as opposed to this upper area, which is more active. Uh, so the reason is the weighting again. Um, it's a little bit, the weighting is a little bit interesting in that uh, you have so much weight up here with all this red. 
but it really kind of draws your eye up here, back up here. And like I said, you travel down. So your eye doesn't really skip over any characters. Maybe cuff a little bit here on the side. Now, the only thing um, is this image has a lot of color going on. And the colors are very vibrant. So vibrant colors work well for things that are not realistic. And comic books, you're in a fantasy world. It is not real. So that's why these vibrant colors work. If you were retouching a photo or something and you had this much, it would be terrible. But overall, this is very nice looking. So just a quick video today. We have Kyle Ritter, uh, a guy who I'd like to talk to in the future. We'll see if that ever happens. But he definitely has a very interesting and very bold color palette choice that seems to work well. Um, this image, I believe, was done by Canon White, so this is not a Van Skyver image but Kyle's style seems to work, seems to complement multiple people. One thing that I am not a huge fan of is like this kind of stuff here. This to me looks like, um, kind of looks like lens flare, something that uh, came into a lot of popularity in the 90s. I'm not a big fan. Um, there's also some digital effects where uh, this kind of stuff, there's a bit of blurring. Um, to me, it sort of distracts from the pencil work. But this isn't a Kyle Ritter specific thing. This is more of a general comics industry. Uh, it got popular mid to late 90s when Photoshop really became uh, a thing and people could color digitally. Also, the increased quality of paper means that you have a wider range of colors. Uh, this is just stuff you couldn't have in the past with newsprint. But, like I said, this is not a Kyle Ritter specific issue. This is just sort of the way things are now. So, thanks for watching. If you like the review, let me know down in the comments, click, lit, click like. And if you want to learn more about color theory, the basics of why color works the way that it does, let me know and maybe I'll make one in the future.